please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Thank you. Good to see you. So this is the August 8th uh, meeting of the Middle Smithfield Township Board of Supervisors. Um, Pat, you don't have to be so remote. <laughs> you can sit then I'll be on the screen. Yeah, that's the thing. Be on the camera. You're the best looking thing in here besides Mary. Uh, right? Uh, is there a motion for the approval of the agenda? Motion. Second, any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a uh, motion to approve the minutes. Second. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Pat, can we have a report of executive session, please? Sure. The uh, board met briefly before this evening's public meeting and executive session to discuss pending litigation in real estate items. No decisions were made. No votes were taken. Thank you. Um, is there any public comment on non-agenda items? Anybody? Okay. Uh, and that brings us to announcements. I just have a couple of short things. Um, on August 13th at the Community and Cultural Center, uh, the Master Gardeners are giving a presentation on rain gardens and um, on your own property and how to do it. Uh, August 16th, Pocono, that's a Friday, Pocono Mo will have a ribbon cutting. That is the old Wilkins building. It's a corner of Pinnacle Lane and Milford Road. So we hope you join us there. And August 18th, um, we'll have the uh, first outdoor mass for St. John's in forever. So that will be at Bushkill Park. You can find information about all of this stuff on our on our website. And just a friendly reminder, the deadline is fast approaching for uh, public input on rename the creek. And uh, do you have any announcements, Mark? Uh, sorry, Mike? No. Okay. Uh, we have the committee and department reports that we do every month. Um, so do you have any highlights from anything there, Mike, that you wanted to point out? No, we have a new member of our parks and rec that will be talking about a new business. Okay. Um, the full reports are on the table on the side, and you can always find them with our minutes in their entirety online. And that brings us to correspondence. Do we have any correspondence? No correspondence this week. Okay, and that quickly brings us to the highlight of this evening, which is the plaque presentation to Marilyn, Dr. Marilyn Brown, who is also a Parks and Recreation Committee member, um, but she is a was a finalist as a 2023 Person of the Year. So we have her plaque here, and you're welcome to come up and say a few words about your organization. Um, she is representing uh, the National Council of Negro Women, um, and I. Christopher also, I understand that on the on the yeah. 30th, is it? Mm -hmm. Yep, you, they adopted Reservoir Road. So you will be doing your litter pickup on the 30th. And Christopher was kind enough to leave all your supplies here for it. So uh, Mike, if you would join me in the front and presenting Marilyn her plaque, that would be wonderful. It's unfortunate, we'll have to face a certain way so that uh, our back isn't towards the camera. And then this way, uh, you could live on. And here are all of the flyers that go with this organization. So I don't know if you would like to say a few words, Mike. We'll leave you with the box, yes. transport it. You look wonderful. Thank you. And here is your plaque. Thank you. All right. <laughs> um, just for anyone who doesn't know, um, the National Council of Negro Women 
was organized in 1935, and it recalls the organization. Oh, oh, channel. Sorry, <laughs> the organization of all organizations. So we we build up the community like most organizations all out here, and our job is just to enhance our families, families of color, families of everybody, but particularly women in general, and just support whether it's economic development, education, and help, and that's what we do. Well, and I have your nomination here uh, and the three words that were used to describe you were determined, grit, and organized. Yes, I, I kind of like grit. Don't take no for the answer. So anyone who knows me, I harass people into volunteering. That's why there's a box on there because lots of people who volunteer in those rooms. Um, Organized, I am very, you know, we about time, dates, and I believe if you're not organized, then the job can't get done. And nothing comes easy, so you have to have some grit. Well, thank you very much, Marilyn, and I'm sure you're a yeah. new thank leader you. in your Parks and Recreation community. Congratulations. Thanks. Right. Congratulations. And if you, Mike, don't run away so fast. I would like to take a photo of you. There we go. All right, slide. Perfect. If you want to stand with your parks and recreation, yeah. Come on, buddy. I understand what you're talking about. I don't know. We are on there. This is a little too close. There we go. All right, smile. Perfect. There you go. Wait, what was mine? I got his Instagram. You got it? You got it? Okay. I'll get it again. Marilyn's also Hang up. All right. I'm going to brought his watershed, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know he had a water. wonderful <laughs> grandfather. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful grandfather. Yeah. I was sorry I couldn't attend this year, but I'm just so happy to hear it. Wonderful. <clears throat> that it went well. So thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. All right. And that leads us to the public hearing portion. Um, so this is a public hearing for uh, proposed ordinance number 243, an ordinance of the township of Middle Smithfield Township. This has to do with renewing uh, the amended cable franchise agreement and removing the franchise fee. So I would make a motion to open the hearing. Second. Any comments or questions? Can you just translate that? Meaning there's no fees with that. So, right. So, oh, sorry. No, no, no. so we had the cable franchise agreement and there was uh, prior to this, when it was created, there was a fee, a cable franchise fee that allowed the cable franchise company to be in our right of ways. So um, we have, have to have the agreement with them, but we don't necessarily have to have the fee. So um, this board has decided to eliminate the fee, which traditionally was a pass through for all of our emergency responders, both fire and ambulance. But it's been decreasing so much over the years because of people streaming. And just as an aside, um, on the 22nd, uh, someone from Cleavage Cable wanted to be present at a meeting, at a supervisor's meeting, to explain like the letter that we got and how they are switching from coaxial cable to fiber. So everyone who now has coaxial cable will have fiber going into their homes. Right. I do okay. Yeah, I mean, what the ordinance is tonight <laughs> is it's authorizing the township to enter into the renewal agreement. There's currently a cable franchise agreement with Blue Ridge. Uh, it's been in place probably since, I want to say, early 2000s. 2008? 2008, what sounds about right. Yeah. 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 So it's, an eight, it's going to be another eight-year term. They've been eight-year terms. Uh, the, really, the only the big change for this one is the Township Board of Supervisors decided to remove the 5% franchise fee. 
to uh, lessen the, the burden or the cost on the uh, taxpayers or the residents of the township. Uh, so other than that, other, other than that, the existing cable franchise agreement is pretty much stays in place. Uh, and the way the renewal agreement reads and the ordinance reads is that the uh, the renewal agreement and the changes provided for therein uh, take effect uh, Jan or July 1, 2024. So it's retroactive. Uh, I will say I, I, I heard back initially from the contact from Blue Ridge. I'm still waiting to hear back definitively or having their signature on the renewal agreement. I haven't gotten that yet. Uh, he's kind of uh, slow to respond, but as far as I know, the renewal agreement is in good shape and the ordinance is in good shape. So uh, really, this is also an opportunity to public hearing for anyone in the public who has any comments, concerns or, or issues with the uh, Blue Ridge service that they've received. I don't know if anyone does. Shoot. That means that they will now be putting the fiber cables on the ground or is it still? Underground, yes. Uh, so those that are still on top, they will now go underground. They're replacing your coaxial yeah. fiber, and yes, it'll be underground. Okay. And you'll you can hear more about it on the twenty second. All right, check that when he comes. And I just before your question, Ed, I just wanted to thank our solicitor for getting Blue Ridge Cable to refund everybody uh, July, because you'll have the fee still on July. So thank you. Let's. Let's hold off until it's done, because that's a little bit out of our hand. It's Blue Ridge, uh, so let's see. Let's have it done, and then then we can thank you. Okay. <laughs> they did say it might take they did. September yeah, or it, October. It may take so, them a while to implement. It. So, but you'll no longer see the fee, and you'll get a refund. Yes, Ed. You said that they're going to replace the. They're, they're going to install uh, fiber optic cable. Is that what you're saying? Yes. On so, the street. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So just to be clear, that's not part of this ordinance or the renewal agreement. It sounds like on a separate note yes. that people from Blue Ridge are in communication with the township, and it sounds like someone from them may be coming to yes. the August 22nd meeting. Yeah. But that's not what this ordinance is doing. This ordinance is simply renewing the existing cable franchise agreement, which allows them to operate or have facilities within the township's right of way. Okay. So the replacement the township, anything? No. Okay. No, but it is supposed to improve service. Okay. All right. Uh, is there anything else from the public? No. Seeing none, you can close the public hearing. Okay, I will make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. So now if you wanted to entertain a motion to pass the ordinance, it would be appropriate. So moved, I would make a motion to pass ordinance number 243. Second. Any comments or questions? Oh, I didn't check to see if anybody. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're up to you, Michael. Okay, motion from our general account, $78,902.32. All second. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to more sewer count $68,940.84. All second. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Park up at $12,641.31. All second. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion from our fire and EMS. Yeah, $27,500. I'll second. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, that brings us to you, Pat, for the solicitor's report. Um, I don't have anything specific to report other than uh, what we've already discussed, and I may have some comments on agenda items further on on the agenda. Okay. Unless Thank there's you. any questions or comments from the board. Nope. Okay. Not yet. Um, engineer's report. There is no engineer this evening. Um, that brings us to old business, which there is none. Moving on to new business, um, text my gov agreement. So, uh, Pat, I believe the contract was sent to you from text my gov, and we have uh, Danny Bryan. On the on with us this evening. Hello, Danny. How are you? Thank you. Great. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. 
Absolutely. Okay. Thanks for having me. This way, if anyone has any questions, uh, they can ask them at this time. Um, so I think if the board is um, ready to move forward, and who's on? Who's on? Uh, Danny Bryant, who is from Text My Go. He uh, will you be our service representative? Uh, I'm uh, I'm the uh, director of sales, so I'm just here to help out with uh, any questions, kind of guide along the uh, initial contract. Um, if it is something you guys do approve, you guys will have a dedicated account manager who will actually be in charge of implementing and setting up the. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, Charlie's Angels. <laughs> oh, did I lose you guys? Hello? Yeah, you, you froze just for a second. But once we get that fiber optic uh, <laughs> instead of coaxial, you will freeze no more. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. Um, um, as of right now, I'm definitely one of your point of contacts um, if, and always will be. If you guys do decide to vote and approve it, you will have a dedicated account manager who will um, be there for any of the city's needs. Okay. Thank you. Um, Pat, I don't know if you had a chance to look at the comments. I did. I, I do have uh, comments and suggested revisions. Uh, but I don't, I mean, you've done this in the past. If this is a service that you, or a product that you that you would like and you want to move it forward, uh, you can always authorize mm -hmm. moving it forward and executing it once uh, it's been revised or addressed or the issues addressed mm -hmm. to the satisfaction of the township. And then what I would do is I'd reach out to whoever the appropriate contact is at TextMyGov mm -hmm. to ensure that those revisions are made. Okay. So, um, you may have missed it last week at the uh, workshop session. Um, Danny gave a, a a meeting, a healthy meeting with myself and Mark, and went over it. And Mark was favorable for this text my gov service because it would replace or make not needed some of the things that he is doing with Tracer. So it would lessen lessen what he has to do with that. So I'm in favor of it. Um, I would make a motion to approve this contract based on uh, attorney review and that those changes would be made. I'll second. Uh, any other comments or questions? How secure are the text numbers that you have? Are, are they shared with all users or how is that done? Uh, sorry, could you, the, the text numbers? Yeah. Shared with, uh, like the citizens text numbers or. Yeah. They said like, right. So if you're sending out to 6,000 people, who secures that list of numbers? Um, so all of the data is secured on AWS gov cloud. So it's, it is all secured through the AWS gov cloud service. As far as who can see the numbers it's uh only obviously only users that you guys allow um you know into the back end and you can set up certain criteria for um you know what users can see what so it, it really gives you flexibility in how to control that would you happen to know uh, since we are using your competitor right now since we are using textcaster would you know what their security is uh, I don't, I do know that they are not using uh, AWS Gov Cloud. I've ran into TextCaster before. Um, and I, the other thing that uh, helps, TextMyGov helps with municipalities is we're 100% FOIA compliant, meaning the township does not need a backup plan to export that data to remain FOIA compliant. So um, we try to make it as little work on your end as possible by providing unlimited storage for FOIA compliance, as well as storing that data on AWS Gov Cloud. So, and I don't know, do, do I have, is, do you have an existing contract with the other? With TextCaster. Do yes. I have that? Probably not. Yeah, I don't think so. We probably, um, we probably want to look at, I'm assuming you're going to terminate that service. Mm -hmm. So we probably want to look at that agreement to see what the provisions are with terminating that service before we jump into this new service. So. Knowing that now, you may want to wait 
Because there might be in your existing service contract with what's the other? Textcast. Textcast. But it's annual and it's sixteen hundred dollars a year, and we're in August. So understood. But I I would feel more comfortable reviewing the termination provision. It might be an automatic renewal if you don't give the notice for a certain time uh, of the year. Uh, I mean, however you want to yeah. proceed, I'll be okay. I would just suggest if you still want to act on this tonight, not only make it conditional upon my review of the text my gov agreement, but also subject to confirmation that we can terminate your existing service provider contract prior to starting or beginning the contract with text my gov. Sounds good. Okay. That sounds good. Um, and what percentage we have Civic Plus, so you're familiar with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? Does anyone have any questions? What is yes, ma'am. So have... Civic Civic Plus is uh, the company that um, hosts our website right now, that does our website for us. And they have a lot of different modules. In fact, they have Notify Me, which we didn't purchase because we have text caster. The difference between text caster and Dan and can tell more uh, about this. Um, the difference between what we have now and this new service. Well, first of all, thank you for the discount because uh, the county went with this service too. So we got a steep discount on the data because you know it was already sold to the county and we're part of Monroe County. But um, not only do we can we push out messages and we can do so to certain areas so if there's a water main break or you know a flooding or a sewer break someplace we can text just to the people in that area to let them know that but they can also text us back and say and report things like pothole or um, noise or something like that and then they'll get a series of questions back that will lead it to more answers and eventually direct them to either the correct person at the township or the correct place in the on the website oh my God, my dentist. <laughs> yeah that's right that's right that's a good analogy so okay there's been a motion with conditions in a second um any other comments or questions Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So thank you very much, Danny. I appreciate yep. it. Yeah, uh, and that, that link I sent you with the proposal, uh, you mm -hmm. can send that to the, I didn't catch his name, but the solicitor and yeah, happy to, yeah, yes. that link, yeah. uh, that link you can, ha you can make edits or uh, make suggestions and I can go and, uh, and approve that with either my, I'm fairly good at this as far as 99% we get the terms to make sense. So if I can't, then I'll have hop on with my VP of sales, but that's the easiest way to make those edits. Okay. Yeah, I think you have the PDF already. That's the contract that you can, that our solicitor can edit. So yep. now just know the contract for Textcaster, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, thank you so much, appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thank you yep. for coming on. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Um, now we have Revitalized 209. Uh, we have an application from Dr. Nails, and the board might remember that we had this um, packet for Dr. Nails in our workshop session. Um, and today we received a new diagram from uh, James. But um, as... The revitalized 209 is set up. It needs a unanimous approval from all three supervisors, and we only have two here tonight. So we can't really do anything with this now except table it. Well, yeah, make a, I mean, well we can just we can we can talk about Taco it. Bell. Taco Bell, the other yeah. there. So we can talk about it, but we can't have any action on it this evening. So sorry, James, I know you were very much looking forward <laughs> to action on this this evening. So I, I don't know if you wanted to have any discussion on it, Mike or Pat. Um, I mean, just what, you know, we were advised, um, James, that uh, we need actual proposals as opposed to phone quotes. 
Um, that I was, thought the phone quote was okay. We just needed three. We need three. So you're okay with three phone calls? Something in writing is always best, but definitely okay. three. All right, then I misunderstood what you said. I thought you wanted three quotes. Well, three, yeah, three. Three something. Yeah. Okay. You know, because. So I think from I think from the township's perspective, we should always be looking for three written mm -hmm. quotes or proposals from potential contractors. So which we have, we just don't have what well, we don't have three of are supervisors. So I don't know if you wanted to talk anymore no, about this. No, honestly. What this is. All right. So uh Oh, yeah, table. motion to take you. Are you making a motion sure. to table? Okay, second, uh, comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And um, now here's the other exciting part. I make a motion to appoint Carolyn Metaxas to the Parks and Rec Committee. I'll second. Any comments or questions? In addition. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to adopt resolution 8-2024-1. To share the cost and the this is, this is the, the sanitary line, right? Yeah. So because PennDOT is um performing work at Hollow Road and they have a project there that re will require us to move the sewer line, they are asking us to pay 25% of the cost of 20%. moving there. Well, it says 25 in the, in the contract. They are asking us to pay 25% of the cost of moving it. So Mike has made a motion to uh, adopt this resolution. I will second. Any comments or questions? So this is the T intersection? Yes, right. ma'am. Is that the intersection? Yes, ma'am. Right. What's that? Do we have to help pay for their disaster? In their it's... It's technically it's our sewer line, but if they do have to relocate it, they'll do it, but we have to pay 25% of it because it's ours. Um, okay, thank you. I mean I, I mean it is what it is. Right. But that's gonna be a disaster. I mean, Absolutely. Sure. And and like we've said before, they've received numerous letters of, of concern from fire EMS the township um but they're proceeding regardless of what anybody's said yeah. so, yes any indication of where they're going to relocate it to have they decided that the, the sewer line yeah. when they widen it I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong I'm assuming they're just going to move it well move it means go to the other side of the road or no 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 well, what 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 is there to move? I mean, it's a pipe in the ground. You're going to make it further away. Well, they have to keep it in the right way somehow. But they have to keep it in the right way. And it may have to be low. I mean, that could be. It could be putting. If they're changing elevation, the sewer line has to be low. Okay. Actually, right where you are, right at the crest of that hill. There. Right. 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 I'm on. So. But just lowering it is not really relocating it. Well, they, it costs money. That's their, have to. That's their form. It's, it's a form uh, document. Okay. So, uh, any other comments or questions? I actually, getting back, now looking at the uh, revitalized uh, 209 application that you have, and I think I understand what Mike was was referencing. So if I understand this correctly, the written quotes in here were filled out by the applicant. So they're, you should re they should really be providing written quotes or proposals from the contractors. And I think that's, is that what you were- in Right, that's what I thought you had said yeah, before. Yeah, we don't, I mean, well, you, they the, should really be getting written quotes from the contractors that are submitting the proposals for these projects. So this, these three written quotes, it looks like they were filled out by the applicant of the grant, which I would suggest letting them know you should be getting the written proposals directly from HM Builders Corp, BAE Construction Corp, and Sun Construction Corp. 
I would suspect when it's does, been so long that you know they would have it by now anyway. When does the township require written quotes versus uh, telephone quotes? Is it bid? Is it bid? A bid. Right. Well, we what get is, phone quotes and we call a vendor and ask them what will it cost. Oh, I'm asking what the number is. What's the threshold? 22. 22 and change. Yeah. Okay. But so, that's the township. That's the township making right. phone calls. Right. Right. It's not relying upon residents applying for grants, making phone calls and writing them on a piece of paper. Hey, we asked these people and they told us these quotes. It's out of our control. So it makes more sense to require these applicants to provide written proposals from the contractors. Right, and I think, like I was saying, these are dated, I believe, back in June. So I presume that these contractors would have a proposal by now. Let's see. Okay, so there's been a motion and a second on resolution 8-2024-1. Any other comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, any public comment? Anything at all? My favorite part, my motion to adjourn. Second, comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And congratulations again, Marilyn. Thank you for coming. You look wonderful. <laughs> okay. Fresh off until vacation.